their shields and their swords to fight the fight they believe to be right. Look at my top 10. I'm going to start from the 10 and work my way up to the top. I, I put Ohio State up at number 10. I think the Buckeyes had an off week. The previous week got back to what they needed to do uh, to take care of Purdue. Wisconsin, I've got at 9. Uh, Brett Bielma really showing what it takes to be able to have back-to-back -back wins. An impressive style. Missouri, for me, I get out up all the way up at 8. Uh, impressed with what they did. Really will be sold if they're able to go to Lincoln and knock off uh, Nebraska. Utah, for me, a football team that not a lot of people are talking about as a non-automatic qualifier, but I like them, and the fact they get TCU at home is a game to remember. Uh, Michigan State, uh, it's a football team that, all right, I'm late to the party, but I'm buying in. Kirk Cousins, the running game, the defense, doing a great job. Alabama, for me, is at number five, and Bama is closing fast. That Alabama-Auburn game, to me, is going to hold a, a, a lot as far as who's going to get to the national championship. I've got TCU up at number four. Andy Dalton doing a good job of overcoming the injuries yesterday. Uh, Auburn for me up at three. Cam Newton continues to be the one man show and just an amazing story in college football. Boise State is at two. I don't know how you guys have them down at four and you're being kind <laughs> to put them at four. Uh, Boise's at two and it takes all I have not to put them at one. But I got the Oregon Ducks with all that speed and Darren Thomas getting it done at number one. The one thing that stands out to me, and listen, I'm a BCS conference snob just like the next guy. I've come full circle on this, and I see 10 good teams. I don't see a great team. You know, Oklahoma last week, we were talking about, you know, everything that they did in the non-conference. I don't know how great Oklahoma is. And because of that, how good is Missouri knocking off Oklahoma? I just think that more and more I watch college football, the more I am trying to separate uh, BCS conference teams from non-automatic qualifiers. Hey, Herbie. Utah, TCU, and Boise State, if there's every year that one of these teams runs the table and should get a shot, it's this year. Yeah, but you know what, Herbie? I, I got to disagree with you. I think when I look at Auburn and Oregon right now, the they're way playing. they're playing, I, I'm, I am incredibly impressed with the power that Oregon has as a football team, with the power of an, an Auburn team and the six of their eight wins being really good, strong quality. So I think we have today two proven really strong teams and as for Boise State Boise State's got two victories under their belt that you that they're hanging their hat on everybody else has three or more at this point uh, Robert well, this is to get in but just a minute Robert Herbie you want to fire back fast here yeah right here? I mean I it, listen, listen it, this is everybody's own take on how you evaluate a football team and I just I'm just telling you right now that and I, I was the guy that liked Auburn in August and everybody laughed by the way so <laughs> Auburn is, is a great team and they're a trendy pick but let me tell you something about Auburn Right now, Cam Newton is carrying Auburn. Auburn is winning despite playing any defense. They're going to potentially win the SEC with that defense. And you're going to tell me that they're a, they're a great football Absolutely team? Absolutely, I am. They're a great offense led. They're a great offense led by Cam Newton. That's so not what? a great every team, great team right is now. led by somebody great, though. Every, every look what Tim I mean, Tebow did look for at, Florida. Look at every Oregon. great team has somebody leading them. Hey, Take them out of the equation, that's, that's and they're great. average. That's great. Right. Let Robert let's in right let's look at the defense. Let's look at the defense for the rest of the year, though. I mean. The system is set up the way that it is for a reason. You know, you've got two-thirds of it that are very subjective. I mean, that's what the polls are for. And if you don't like the answers that you're getting for the computers, junk in, junk out. I mean, change the questions that you ask. Don't be upset when the computer says that a Boise State should be at a number three when they're higher in the human polls. I think, you know, we just need to keep voting the teams where we think they are. Keep evaluating them from week to week. And if we go on and we see Auburn's not that good, maybe we don't jump up in Alabama later in the season, even, later in the season, even if they have performed well. You know, I as, of just today, keep an, just keep, as of today, though. Just keep an open mind. Right. Keep an open mind. Right. All I vote every long. week. New week. Okay, uh, <laughs> Kirk, you are in a similar situation here. You sort of have decided, at least in your mind at this moment, that it's hard to tell. But you still have to rank them some way. It's a system we have. So what's the most important thing to you when you start trying to line these teams up? Well, I think the biggest thing for me is consistent, 
consistency throughout the year. You know, when you're trying to split hairs here, I think as much as Robert and Craig are saying you have to give, uh, you know, consideration to a team like Missouri, and I think you're right, uh, for them knocking off a good Oklahoma team uh, at home, uh, I, don't, I don't react to one big win. I look at three or four or five or six weeks in a row what the trend of a football team is, and I think that the biggest thing that's going to become a problem for the voters, which represent two-thirds of this, is doing what a lot of people, including Craig and Robert, have done, almost looking for reasons to find a team below TCU, below Boise, to move them up. That's it's not Michigan true. State. Huh? That's not true I can already tell I, you I next week. No. I can already tell you next week. Michigan State's moving by both uh, TCU no. and uh, Boise State the, on their polls, the glass and most ceiling. people's polls, but, because, because of playing but Iowa. This, but this is the thing, and I thought, you know, I thought that Brad made a great point last week, and he's talking about Oregon Brad State. Without, or, I'm sorry, yes, Brad. Yeah. Brad uh, talking about uh, you know uh, Boise State and TCU, the win over Oregon State. Oregon State was a better. Team then with James Rogers, but I think the opposite opposite of that is also true. Virginia Tech just wasn't the same team that they are right now when they played Boise State at the beginning of the year, and Pitt certainly wasn't the same team that Utah played at the beginning right. of the year. They're a much better team right now. So I am. I'm trying to keep an open mind about all, about all this, but I'm not so sure Boise State plays Virginia Tech today. They beat them. I'm just I, not no, that sure. Exactly. But here's what I do. Back to your point on that deal that you made the comment about, Herbie, is when I look at this, I look at the body of work. And why is Michigan State for me so high where I have them in my ballot? Because they had four consecutive weeks where they were challenged. And I reward them for that. I'm not looking. I have no ceiling on Boise State. I have no reason for that. I'm looking at the schedules. I'm looking at the opportunity on the football field to prove themselves. That's what I'm looking for. No glass ceilings for me. Okay, Michigan State doesn't have Ohio State and on its remaining schedule here. The I, I think it's the biggest... You know, I want to go back to Kirk for a minute. Kirk, you, you've talked about people looking for a reason to move teams past Boise. I want to put it to you from a different perspective. Uh, because last week I know you said, why, why even rank these teams? The counter argument to that would be, why do you reward them for not maybe having as stiff a challenge as some of the teams in the automatic qualifying conferences? Or are you of the opinion that their challenge is as stiff as what Michigan State has faced or what Auburn or Oregon will face? Oh, absolutely not. I'm not saying that at all. And again, you're talking to a guy that uh, the notion that a Boise or a, or a BYU or a Utah should even be thought of in a BCS bowl game, let alone a championship game three or four years ago for me, I wouldn't even want to have this discussion. So I, I don't have an agenda here for Boise. I really don't care about Boise State and what ends up happening to them. I'm just going by evaluating, watching them play as a team. The team, the team, the team. The team. The team, the team. And I just have a really hard time if this, the BCS is allegedly open to all of these teams and not just the BCS conferences. I don't know how a Boise State or a TCU ever can get actually into a real argument and have a chance to get to the championship game if we're going to continue to say, who have they played? Who have they beaten? The obvious answer is nobody when you compare that to the SEC or the Big 12 or the Pac-10 or the Big 10. So... The only thing I have left to do is to look at Perfect. Boise you just State as a you football just team. You no, just said no, it. You just said it. No, 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 no. You incriminated yourself by saying who have they played let and you me said finish. nobody. Let me finish. Let me finish. Okay. I, in my own way, look at Boise State as a football team. The team, the team, the team. The team, the team, the team. I have a veteran quarterback, an offense and a defense that can play with anybody, and despite playing in the WAC, I think they can play on a neutral field with any team in the country. And I agree That's with you. That's just my opinion. I agree with so, you. So because of that, I am trying to separate myself from who they play. Look at that schedule. Who they play. I'm trying to separate myself from that schedule and look at them as a team. X's and O's, football. If Missouri's a great team last night beating Oklahoma, Boise uh, State would, would handle Missouri. Are you kidding me? Okay. Second okay. uh -huh. down and seven. Herb Street throws a balloon downfield and is intercepted. The ball took off on him. And this is Corwin Brown. You got an Ohio State man down on the field across the way, having lost his helmet. Could be rough on the and pass. I think it's the Herb Street, the quarterback, and there's a flag over there with him. Whoa. It's uh, Henderson, 79. Yeah. 
Landed right on top yeah. of him. I don't know if his uh, momentum was already such that he couldn't stop himself, but uh, Henderson, a backup nose tackle. Herb Street, he landed right on him. I mean, he just deflated him completely, so he's hurt. To the towns where there was plenty, they brought plunder, swords, and flame. When they left, the town was empty, and children would never play again.